So I thought today we could do the actual practice of a lot of the poses that um, if you join the Yoga Alliance series on Thursday, we talked a lot about mythology. So, um, you know, the other day I did a full practice of all the poses that we talked about and it felt amazing. So nice to be able to then bring the theory into the practical, right? So we can, we can do that today and see how those poses, what they evoke in our body and what they're meant to evoke within our own body system, energy system, right? Good. So let's start seated. Right, and we, I usually start with uh, pranayama or kapal bhati, which is a forceful exhalation, passive inhalation. So if you've never done that before, you know, I can guide you through it. We can place your hand on your abdomen first. So closing your eyes, first and foremost, is important to establish samma vritti, which is even inhalation, even exhalation. You can begin to constrict the back of the throat slightly so that you can hear the sound of the breath. That's called the ujjayi pranayam. So that sound of the breath begins to draw the mind into your body. And whatever is in your body right now in this moment is indicative of the present moment, of being present, of being full here and now. So most of the times our mind is dispersive. So drawing all the movement of the mind going to the left, to the right, up and down, bringing it back to the center line of your body. That's the spinal column, the way the breath enters the nostrils, the sound of the breath. And the samma vritti, even inhalation, even exhalation, that samma means the same or the balance. So no matter how disbalanced we were in the moments before we joined the class or even in the moments after the class ends, at least for this hour and 15 minutes, we are making a commitment for balance, for homeostasis within mind, body and spirit. And that commitment doesn't come through words, but commitment to a balanced breath. Right, as human beings, so many times we go against what we think, we go against what we say, but the action right now is most important. The act of drawing balance, the act of coming back to presence. That is what starts to change the grooves of the mind. Good. See if you can begin to lengthen your breath. So maybe five seconds inhale, five seconds exhale. As you lengthen your breath, especially on the inhalation, begin to lift the back of the head so that the neck spine elongates. As that happens, the chin draws down slightly. Good. And as the neck spine lifts, there's a little bit more room for the abdominal and pelvic organs to expand and contract with the breath. Very nice. So we'll start with Kapal Bhati, which is a cleansing breath to help bring prana or energy into the lungs and respiratory tract. So again, if you're new to the practice, your hand will be at the abdomen. Otherwise, if you're familiar with the practice, you can inhale, take your arms up overhead behind above you and then flip the palms, bring the chin slightly down. Continue to breathe in Ujjayi. All right, so Kapal Bhati is really pumping the abdomen back on the exhalation and then it's a natural inhalation. 
you don't have to try to inhale, it just happens of its own accord. So let's try 54 rounds today to begin. If at any time your breath becomes arrhythmic or you start to make sounds in your throat, that's a good indication to stop, please. So go ahead and breathe in. And then begin with that forceful exhalation. Good. Keep going. Keep the face relaxed. Pelvis stable, chest relatively still. It's really just localizing the pumping action at the stomach region. Whenever it is that you finish, your hands will come down on the lap. And you'll continue breathing in your ujjayi pranayam, slight constriction in the throat, listening to the sound of the breath. Nice. Let the wave-like sound of your breath bring you into a natural state of ease and meditation. All is well. In this moment, mind, body, spirit are healthy. Today, as we begin to practice the poses that inspire our dreams, inspire our lives, certain poses are strong, inducing ferocity. Other poses are soft and sweet, bringing forth the nature of compassion, love, and kindness knowing how and when to utilize which emotions to achieve our means is part of the morals of all of these stories. Something goes horribly off balance. That is always the starting point. There is a demon loose, whether it's the nature of your own mind at that moment imbued with jealousy or hatred or doubt, right? Something is running amok. And gradually the disbalance is harmonized through calling forth the energies within us. Calling forth the goddess or the gods that restore order. So as you breathe here, just recognizing and holding both, both the balancing aspects of who you are and that which disbalances, which causes disharmony, which causes separation. Good. With your next breath in, you'll gently open your eyes, take your hands back behind you, draw your knees together, and then you'll go ahead and prop yourself up onto your knees and then come to a forward fold in Uttanasana. Bring your feet together, knees together, and just relax your head. We'll take a little bit of a longer hold today so you can take your hands to opposite elbows and let the weight of the elbows drop down towards the ground. 
crown of the head dropping down as well. Right, when you stand, whether it's upright or folding forward, it's, you know, a nice way to do this is to keep the feet together. Because at first the feet together might feel highly disbalancing. It might feel as though you cannot find the center point, but slowly with your attention to the middle of the centers of the feet, you can start to work with that which pulls you off center and drawing it back to the center line. Relax the lower jaw, please. Good. And then if the hands are holding the opposite elbows, release the hands. Good. And then interlace the fingers. Keep the head down as you inhale, bring the arms all the way up, coming to stand. And then exhale, arms down by the sides of the body. Close your eyes. Every moment is a possibility for renewal, possibility for introspection. We'll start with some hasta vinyasas to open up the whole chest cavity and the capacity to draw in more prana, more energy, more breath into your lungs. So inhale, bring the arms up. Nice and slow, five second inhalation, don't rush. Interlace your fingers, flip your palms. And then exhale, five second exhalation, slowly lower the arms, keep the waist lifted. Keep pressing through the heel bones. Good, let's do that again. Inhale, arms reach up. Chin slightly down, interlace your fingers, press up. This time at the peak of your inhalation, hold the breath slightly. Feeling the pressure in the lungs. And then exhale, lower the arms. Very good. Next inhalation, again, take the arms up. Listen to that smooth sound of your breath all the way in. Interlace, press up. Exhale, bend the elbows out to the sides. Take the hands behind the head. Good. Now inhale here. Fill the upper lobes of the lungs. Hold the breath in. Good. And then exhale all the breath out. Inhale, press the arms up. And then exhale, lower down. Very nice. Now full shoulder rotation. Inhale. Take the arms up. Interlace the fingers, press up through the palms, down through the heels. Now, as you exhale, bend your knees, lean back, take the hands all the way back around and to the front. As the hands come to the front, straighten the legs. Inhale, arms out to the sides and up. Flip the palms. Good, reverse movement. Exhale, separate the hands, bring the hands straight out in front of the shoulders. Continue to exhale, arms out to the sides. And then inhale, take the arms forward. And then all the way up, flip the palms up towards the sky. Let's do that one more time. Take a resting breath. Slide the shoulder blades down the back, close the eyes. Good. Your next exhalation, bend your knees first, then arc the spine back, separate the fingers, rotate the shoulders, arms reach forward, palms face up. Inhale, take the arms out to the sides, and then all the way up to the sky. Flip the palms. Exhale, separate the hands, hands down right at shoulder level, and then out to the sides, Really sweep the pinkies behind you. Open the front of the chest. Exhale. And then inhale, bring the arms forward. And then all the way up. Flip the palms. Good. Next exhalation, hands relax down by the sides of the body. You just feel the changes in the upper chest region as you breathe in and out. Good. 
slow down your breathing. Parshvabhangi, as you inhale, take the arms out to the sides, all the way up to the sky. Lift the palms, press down through the heels, and then exhale, side bend, gaze forward, over to the right side. Two breaths here. As you inhale, it's a short inhalation, rising up slightly, taking that left shoulder back. And then as you exhale, let that exhale soften the fascia along the left side body. Good, one more. Inhale, short inhalation. And then start to lengthen your exhalation. As your exhalation lengthens, right, the nervous system will start to relax. Muscles will start to relax. Good. Next inhalation, come through center, chin slightly down, and then exhale, take it over to the other side. Keep the gaze forward, head is neutral. Good, and then inhale, roll back that right shoulder, short inhalation, and then long, slow, deep exhalation. Good, again, inhale, short inhalation, and then long, slow, deep exhalation, right? The exhalation should be like when you pour oil from a, you know, a bottle, that smooth stream that flows out unbroken. Good, next inhalation, come back up. Good, and then exhale, take the arms down, waist is lifted, shoulders relax, close your eyes. As you breathe, breathing as a three-dimensional being, right? Your lungs are in all directions in the center of your chest. Utilizing your body for its full potential. That's really what yoga is. Maximizing our inner potentials. Good. Surya Namaskar. So go ahead and stand to the front of your mat, please. Inhale, take the hands to the heart in Anjali Mudra, chin slightly down, feet together. Before you begin your Surya Namaskar or sun salutation, take a few moments to invoke the essence of the sun in your heart, whether it's the visual of the sun, whether it's the quality of life giving energy, the quality of illuminating darkness, the quality of moving through space effortlessly, whatever it is that the sun represents for you, right? Hold it dear. That's really the meaning of the Surya Namaskar. And to hold dear the quality of yourself that is imminent unchanging despite all the ups and downs of life itself there's a part of you that is a stable foundation that holds your heart up good be together inhale take the arms out and up flip the palms good and then exhale, separate the fingers, fold forward, Uttanasana. Take the fingers by the sides of the toes or on the legs if they don't touch the ground. Drop the head completely, right? The chin drops the head gaze back to the inner body. Crown of the head is wide and open towards the ground. Om Suryaya Namaha. I pay my respect to that sun, the energy of the sun that gives life to all beings. Your next exhalation, bend your knees, Utkatasana, all the way down, deep squat. Good, right, round the shoulders, drop the head towards the knees, fingers are together, palms fully on the ground. Good, now inhale here. Hold the breath in, contract the pelvic floor, step or hop back to Chaturanga Dandasana, right? Coming halfway down, knees up or knees down. Good. 
exhale, lay your body on the ground, relax the toes, reach the arms forward, palms pressed together, head down between the two upper arm bones. Good. Danda Samarpanam, the full prostration of your body. Stay here, two breaths. Feeling the connection of your whole front body to the earth. And just imagining that your middle fingers are pointing towards that rising sun. What would it feel like to prostrate your body to the sun itself? Good. Next exhalation, take your hands by the sides of the chest, tuck the toes. Good, draw the elbows in and then inhale, Chaturanga Dandasan, either pushing up, knees up or knees down. Exhale here and then inhale, lift the chest, knees down, chin down, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Right, roll the shoulders back, close your eyes. Exhale, tuck your toes, lift the knees and then up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Feet together, fingers together. Great. Very important, never trying to elevate our heart rate in our yoga practice. Other practices are there, but yoga is for reducing the heart rate, right? Getting maximum blood flow to the heart, but with a reduction of the heart rate itself. Good. Three breaths here. Try to elongate your exhalation. Five second inhale, 10 second exhalation, right? You'll notice that the more you focus with the breath, the more the body responds and opens up to you so that you don't have to physically start to move and stretch as much, but the breath starts to move and stretch from the inner body out. So changing that locus of attention now. Good, your next exhalation, bend your knees, hold the breath out, step, or hop forward to Utkatasan, deep squat, chin down. Good, inhale, slide the hands back, lengthen the legs, fold forward, Uttanasan. Exhale here. Next inhalation, interlace your fingers, rise all the way up, chin down. Good. And then exhale, take the hands to the heart, Anjali Mudra, chin slightly down, gaze into the heart center. Check in with your heart rate. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation. Good, we'll do that one more time. This time, see if you can keep your eyes closed now that you've gotten used to the movements See if you can stay with that solar light, that which is unchanging within you. Good, now inhale, sweep the arms up. Interlace the fingers, palms press up. Good, exhale, separate the fingers, fold all the way down, Uttanasana, head down. Take your time. Inhale here. Don't lift the head. Get closer to the legs. And then exhale, squat down into Utkatasan. Could be half squat, full squat, whatever that looks. But keep the head down. Grow small like a fetus. Good. And then from that rounding energy, your next inhalation, press into the ground. Feel yourself fill. Contract the pelvic floor and then step or hop back to Chaturanga Dandasana. Good. Exhale, lower down onto the ground, relax the feet, extend the arms forward, palms pressed together, head down onto the ground. Danda Samarpanam. Danda is a stick, your body, this long stick. Samarpanam is full, absolute surrender. So when we do Surya Namaskar, we're learning surrender. So as you lay your body in this prostration, in this act of 
physical prayer, what is it in this moment that I can surrender to? Right? So much of our life is about keeping things together, controlled, as a false sense of security. But right now, is there anything that you can give yourself up for? Good. Your next exhalation, take the hands by the sides of the chest, roll the shoulders back, tuck the toes, fingers together. Inhale, press up into Chaturanga. Exhale here, and then inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Right, the Urdhva, the upward motion is coming from the extension of the front spine up and out of the pelvis. Good. And then exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Downward facing dog. Right, chin is coming towards the notch of the throat in a slight Jalandhara Bandha, which is a chin lock. First thing in Adho Mukha Svanasana is always the elongation of the exhalation. So if you were here last week, right, learning how this downward dog prepares us to do the seals or locks, the bandhas in our inversions. Our spine is relatively inverted here. So as you exhale, empty, 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 empty the abdomen completely. At the end of your exhalation, right, you can then contract the pelvic floor, draw the belly in and up, and then relax the bandhas, and then breathe in naturally. Only if there's space and relaxation. If you find your breath is jagged, then don't do it. Good, your next exhalation, please bend your knees, empty all the breath out, and from that emptiness, hop or step forward. Utkatasana, yeah, very good. Heels up or heels down, spine is rounded. Slide the hands back, inhale, lengthen the legs, especially the backs of the knees, head down. Exhale here, as you exhale, bring the head closer towards the knees by the emptiness of the abdomen, not by any force itself. Inhale, interlace the fingers, keep that chin down so that you lead with the extension of the side body all the way up, up, up. Good, and then exhale, hands to the heart. Anjali Mudra, eyes closed. The center of your head, your manas, the part of your mind that is always active, problem solving, analyzing, dropping that manas, the frontal lobe down to look at the heart as an act of this samarpanam, surrender. Good, very nice. Start to lengthen your breath. And just imagine that solar light of the sun expansive in the center of the torso, the rays extending in all directions through the limbs giving life energy into the pelvis, into the legs, and into the earth below you. Good. Exhale, relax the arms down. Go ahead and turn to the long edge of your mat. Feet together. Good, inhale, bring the arms out to shoulder level, fingers together. And then as you exhale, step, or hop the feet apart, toes out, heels in. Good. Yeah. Shift the weight to the outer edges of the feet, draw the pinkies back in space, chin slightly down to lift the lower back. Good. Start to breathe deeply into your sacral body. Very nice. Now your next inhalation, flip your palms, reach your arms up, interlace the fingers. Good. Relax the shoulders down. And as you exhale, turn your whole pelvis to the right. Just notice when you turn your pelvis to the right, your feet naturally adjust themselves to the correct position. You don't have to think so much about the physical alignment cues, but rather follow the body moving in space. 
Good. Now use both legs equally. <laughs> yeah, especially that back leg. Now inhale, arc the upper back, look up. As you exhale, separate the hands, reach the arms out, and then all the way forward. As they come forward, the front knee will bend, palms face up. Same kind of shoulder movements we were doing before. Good. Just get used to the movement first. Inhale, keep the front knee bent, take the arms out to the sides, back, and then up. Interlace the fingers, lift the heart. Good, again, exhale, take the arms out, back, and all the way around to the front, palms face up. And then inhale, reach the arms back, up, and then flip the palms. Arc the upper back. Good, now exhale, sweep the arms all the way around. This time you'll stay, Virabhadrasana. Let there be a softness in the centers of the palms like you're holding two flowers. Take the whole upper body back in space. Close your eyes, relax your lower jaw. Vira means intense effort, intense enthusiasm. So keep the arms lifted, to keep the weights lifted. There's an intense enthusiastic effort from the heart. And Bhadra is the most auspicious, the most excellent one, right? And a pose that infuses one with vigor, energy, enthusiasm, but knowing how to direct that energy is very important. So the softness in the joints, the softness in the face, so that your energy doesn't become aggressive and destructive that flows in the realm of compassion and right action. Good, one more breath. Very nice, and then inhale, sweep the arms back, up. And then as they reach up, you'll turn back towards the center. And then exhale, take the hands to the hips, toes out, heels in. Close your eyes, chin slightly down. Feel your heart rate. And just notice, was I with the breath or was I with the physical quality of the pose? Totally fine if you were with the physical quality of the pose, but this is why the second side is always a nice reminder of how to practice. If you slow down your breathing, you'll find that the pose tends to hold itself that there is a sense of sustainability in your action. So just wait, be patient, get your breath back, get your heart rate back. Very nice. And now begin to deepen your breathing, starting Ujjayi again, listening to the breath in the throat. And then inhale, sweep the arms up. Flip the palms if you can. As you exhale, your whole waist turns to the left. Naturally, your left foot turns forward. Your right heel kicks out slightly. Good. Before you do anything, right, start that enthusiastic vita, the enthusiastic effort from the legs, right? Extending up through the arms. Good. And then inhale, arc back through the upper spine. As you exhale, separate the hands, take them back around to the front. As they sweep around to the front, the front knee bends in unison, palms open. Very good. Keep the front knee bent, inhale, sweep the arms back, up, and then flip the palms, arc back slightly. One more time, exhale, sweep around. Nicely opening the palms at the front and then inhale, arms out to the sides and then all the way back. Good. 
good. Arc back once you reach up. Good. And then smooth exhalation. This time we stay. Arms reach to the front. Equal use of the legs to inspire that aspect of Veera Bhadra, the most fearsome god or energy of this aspect of dissolution or destruction in your body, right? What is it that needs to be dissolved that cannot quite be lodged loose in this moment, right? Feel your breath getting warmer like a fire heating up that which is stuck, <laughs> that which refuses or fights against you. Don't fight it, but just warm it up so that it becomes softer, more malleable, easier to work with. You don't even have to have a name, but a general sensation, a general feeling inside of yourself of cultivating strength with wisdom. Good. If the body is tired, start to bring the energy back into the navel center, the home of fire itself. Good. And then inhale, take the arms back all the way up. As they reach up, begin to straighten the front leg, turn back towards center, extend up. Good. And then exhale, arms down, take the hands on the hips. Relax your breathing, right? Either step or hop the feet together and then exhale, arms down, Tadasana, mountain pose. Five breaths. Now, if you are tired, lay down. If you feel the body needs rest, five breaths, just lay down in Shavasana and then join us at the end of five breaths. Otherwise, see if you can rest here. That means do nothing, non-action. not even striving to grab the breath. Just let it be as it wants to be. Once the heart rate is regulated, then begin to lengthen the breath. Don't fight your own breathing, please. Good. Two more breaths. Right, if it's comfortable for you, begin to lengthen your breathing. Five second inhale, five second exhale. If you're laying on the ground, go ahead and just roll up to stand. Good. Gently open your eyes, shifting your whole pelvis over to the left side. As you inhale, you lift the right knee, take the right knee out to the side, and then the full sole of the foot anywhere along the leg can be lower, can be higher. We will be staying here for more than a minute in our Ariratasana or Prikshasana. So choose wisely, right? Good. Keep the hands on the legs and gently coax that right knee out to the right side a little bit. Shoulders broad and wide, equal balance between left and right pelvis and left and right shoulder. Good. Bring that effort into your standing leg. Use a wall if you need to. Gazing at a point in front of you and then inhale, hands to Anjali Mudra at the heart, chin down. Stay here. If you feel balanced, then taking the arms all the way up to the sky. Hands can separate or palms can stay together. Keep the back of the neck long, gazes down. Right, Bhagiratha is a name for King Bhagiratha. The one who did his austerities, his practice in this position to bring prosperity, to bring health, happiness, back to his land that was suffering from famine, from disrepair. He said in the story, he stayed in this position for 1,000 years. Right? 
we'll try 60 seconds. <laughs> but having that same sense of energy and focus of your tapas, your austerity, your practice, your dedication to bring the wealth, prosperity, abundance back into your body, reclaiming your birthright, right? This Vrikshasana or Bhagiratasana actually activates all seven chakras. It's not a beginner's pose. <laughs> Good. So pressing down through the standing left heel to extend up through the middle fingers, earth and space connected together through the line of your entire spinal column. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation. Count your breaths if you need to. Five second inhale, five second exhale. If the standing leg gets tired, lift the waist more with buoyancy, with lightness so that the weight of the body moves upward in space. Good. Your eyes dim slightly. So eyes are half closed now maybe. Good. You're feeling the whole line of your spine from the pelvic floor all the way up to the crown of the head. One more breath, grow long, extend, and then exhale, softly release. Step equally onto both feet, chin slightly down, shoulders back, samastitihi or taras and mountain pose. With the feet together, you'll get a clear indication of the balance of your body from left to right. right? You step the feet apart, of course you balance it physically, but with the feet together, you'll get a very sort of deeper understanding of how you hold weight, how you distribute weight in your body. Good. Start to lengthen your breathing, deepen your breathing. Ujjayi pranayama again. Hearing the sound of the breath by constricting the throat just slightly. Bhairatasana on the other side, shift the weight over towards the right side, towards the center of the right heel. Inhale, left heel. Knee comes up, out to the side, and then you can help the foot against the thigh. Good. Take the hands on the legs, gently help that left knee growing long towards the left side. Very nice. Right, extend the back of your right knee. And then inhale, maybe hands to Anjali Mudra at the heart. You can always use the wall behind the body. It feels very nice and nurturing and helps to keep and maintain the posture for longer periods of time, so no worries. Now from here, extend the arms all the way up. Separate the hands if you feel too much pulling in your shoulders, right? That helps to relax the shoulder blades down. And just starting to invoke the tapas, the austerity of this king and the, his love for his land, right? To stay in one posture so that the river Ganga would come and flow down into the land. Nurturing the land, nurturing the seeds, nurturing people, animals, all beings. With your arms extending upright up to the sky, right? It's your act of prostration to the upward flowing energies flowing down the arms, down into the whole length of your spine for healthy physiological function, for healthy energetic function in your chakras, down and through the feet. Good. Let the eyes dim slightly. Relax your face, lower jaw relaxing as well. Right, and just let the grace enter your body. And let the grace enter the expression of your face. Stay devoted to that inhale and devoted to that exhale. 
maintain that link of mind with breath. You can try and practice gently closing the eyes almost and let the breath carry you in the pulse. Five more breaths, lifting upper body away from the balanced effort of your pelvis. Good. All right, can you feel the joy of your internal organs experiencing repose? Very nice. Right, in Vinyasa Krama, sometimes we hold this pose for over five to 10 minutes, right? Like going through so many phases of the mind, exhaustion, anger, frustration, and then finally, maybe you reach that place of tranquility. Now exhale, take the hands down, relax the foot, close the eyes, feet together, samastiti. If your heart rate is beating fast, soften the breathing. Good. And then go ahead and turn to the front of your mat. Inhale, take the arms up, lift the palms. Exhale, hands in Anjali Mudra above you, palms together, fingers pointing up. Inhale, arc the upper back, gaze up. And then exhale, draw the belly in to bring the hips back as the upper body folds forward and down, Uttanasana. Fingers by the side of the toes or on the legs, head down. Good. Next exhalation, bend your knees, squat down, round the spine. Good. And then from here, reach your fingers behind you, Roll onto your bottom and then just come for a rest in Shavasana. Let the head turn to one side. Right. Learn to rest in between activity. So Shavasana is not only meant for the end of class, right? Sometimes it's just then passing out because you're exhausted. But if you do Shavasana throughout the practice, right, you create uh, the potential within yourself to sustain, to preserve, to protect the wear and tear that happens on your nervous system, in your physical body, and of course, deeper in the emotional realm. So just rest completely, give up all the joints, give up, give up, give up. Very nice. Right, the practice is learning how to move into the posture and how to move out of the posture without attachment. So now in Shavasana, you might be getting attached to rest a little bit, right? It might feel really nice. then start to breathe deeper, right? Come back to that long inhalation, long exhalation. Bring your legs together. Extend the arms up overhead behind you. Inhale, interlace your fingers. Press the palms away from the toes. Lengthen the body. Good. And then exhale all the breath out. Feel the low back spine coming towards the ground. And then again, inhale, stretch, right? Stretching from that central core of the abdomen and then exhale, draw the belly in, 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 in. Good. And then next inhalation, reach the arms up, roll up to sit, Dandasana. Take the arms up if it's comfortable. Good. 
and then exhale, hands down by the sides of the body here. Chin slightly down, toes can be pointed or flexed, doesn't matter. Close your eyes, press the thigh bones deeply into the ground. If you have any lower back issues, bend your knees slightly so that you can give a nice support for your sacral body. Why a sacral body? Because it's the combination of five bones fused together. So it's five different consciousnesses fused together, creating one body known as the lower back spine. Good. Your next exhalation, bend your right knee. Good. And then step your right foot to the outside of the left leg. We're moving to Ardha Matsyandrasana. Some of you can just stay here with the left leg extended. Others of you can lean back and then bend your left knee so that your left heel is to the outside of the right hip. So try both, see which one is most conducive to an upright spine. Try to keep your whole right foot on the ground, right knee up towards the sky. And just interlace your fingers around the front knee for a second, chin down. Breathing in and out. Good. And then inhale, sweep the arms up, interlace the fingers, flip the palms, right? Lifting up from the waist, but sliding the shoulder blades down the back. Good. Next exhalation, turn your whole lower waist towards the right side. Good. And then take your right hand behind the back, left arm can hook around the knee, right? Your right hand is close to your body so that you're not leaning back, but creating this pillar of support. Good. And then your left arm squeezing the thigh towards the midline. Very nice. Keep the head neutral for now. Close your eyes. As you exhale, sit your right hip into the ground more firmly and then begin to twist from the lower ribs to the mid ribs first. Inhale, reaching that left knee up towards the sky. And then as you exhale again, sit deeper into the right hip so that you balance the pelvis and then twisting now maybe from the upper chest. And then finally the head and neck can turn back to look behind the right shoulder. Right? If you remember the story now of Matsyendra, the boy who was swallowed by a fish. And when he was swallowed by a fish, he overheard the teachings of yoga between Shiva and his wife, Shakti. And for 16 years in the belly of the whale, <clears throat> he became a master of yoga, practicing these positions in this cramped space. And after 16 years, he emerged as the first human who was a yoga master. So feeling the compression of your pelvic organs so that when you release, they can emerge, right? In a masterful way. Good. Next exhalation, squeeze a little bit deeper, feeling from the sacrum. And then inhale, take the arms up, interlace your fingers, press your palms up. Good, now as you exhale, lean back slightly and then see if you can kick out both legs, right? Coming back to Dandasana. If you can't, take your hands behind you and then just unwrap the legs, good. Next exhalation, hands down by the sides of the hips. Chin slightly down. Regulate your breathing. This time, your left knee will bend on the exhalation and then step to the outside of the right thigh. Keep that inner right left foot really pressing into the ground. Good. And then if you'd like to, 
Your right knee can also bend. Heel right next to that outer left hip. Good. Go ahead and interlace your fingers around the front knee first, chin down. Lengthen the back of the neck. Ujjayi pranayam, five second inhale, five second exhale. Right, make sure that the legs are close together. Breathing as though your breath flows up and down the spine, which it does in the form of prana, the energy. And then inhale, take the arms up, interlace, lengthen the spine first. And then as you exhale, twisting from the sacral body, from the lower ribs, release the hands. Left hand is a column behind you, right elbow around the left knee. Two breaths to come into the full expression of the pose, which means the head turning back. But work your way step by step into this rotation of the spinal vertebrae. Remembering as you exhale, balance left and right pelvis by sinking the left hip down to the ground. As you inhale, squeeze that left knee towards the midline even more. The final expression will be the turn of a naturally flexible head and neck, right? The flexibility is coming now, the focus deep into the lower back region. Matsyendra, this king of yoga, right? The father of Hatha yoga, the yoga that we, the roots of the yoga that we practice today, right? Their practice was about freeing the sacrum so that we could sit longer in meditation so that the kundalini energy, the energy that's dormant, asleep, the potential, the sleeping potential in the base of our spine, we can learn to wake it up. So maybe your focus is down in the pelvic floor, down in the sacrum, as you practice the Lord of the Fishes pose, Matsyendra. Good. Five second inhale, five second exhale. Maybe your exhalations are getting longer now. Just like you do in the Surya Namaskar, the Danda Samarpanam, when you give up your body to the earth in prostration to the sun, giving up the expression of your spine, giving up your mind and its need to control the situation, giving up to presence. Good. Your next inhalation. Unwind by reaching the arms up, interlace the fingers, press up, and then to extend the legs, either lean back and then kick out the legs into Dandasana, or take the hands behind you and help yourself to that position. Good. Chin down, eyes closed. Knees can be slightly bent or long, but just notice perhaps a little bit more flexibility. Take the hands down by the sides or on the legs. Good. Even here, feeling the pulsation of your breath in your abdomen. Right, from Dandasana, you're gonna take your hands behind you and then just lift your right leg and then open your right leg out to the right side so that you're sitting on your mat and then you just kind of turn to the side or turn towards the computer. You can do the left leg, doesn't matter. Good. And then take the hands underneath your knees, bend your knees, bring the soles of the feet together, hands around the feet or on the ankles if you cannot reach the feet, no problem. Good. Now lift the shoulders up and then slide the shoulder blades down the back. Chin down, close your eyes. Bada Konasan, butterfly. 
as you exhale, pressing the outer knees down towards the ground. As you inhale, feeling that sacral body entering towards the front spine, moving forward towards the heels. Good. Now gently open your eyes. Inhale, sweep the hands behind your hips, right? As they touch onto the ground, lift your hips up and then slide your hips forward closer towards the heels. So it doesn't matter if your knees are all the way up, you're just moving slightly forward. Some of you, right, can move even closer so that you're coming towards Gorakshasana. Right, Gorakshasana is where the heels touch the pelvic floor, the perineum, but the focus is here on the gradual reaching together of the pelvis and the base of the heels. Close your eyes, lengthen the back of the neck. Right, and Goraksha was the student of Matsyendra. He was the one who helped spread the teachings of Hatha Yoga all over India and then now all over the world. Good. From here, if you'd like to fold forward just slightly, you can relax the head completely but folding again from the movement of the sacrum pressing into the body. See if the breath can be like a pulsation or a massage for the, those five fused bones of your sacrum. If we can free up our sacrum, our hips relax. If our hips relax, our knees soften. If our knees soften, our ankles become more malleable, more open. Right? So the sacrum is the master of the lower body. Master of that apana energy, the downward flowing energy. Three more breaths. Very good. And then slowly, if you're folding forward, rise up, interlace your fingers, take the arms up, lean back, extend the legs out again. Good. And then lean over to the left hip and then bring the right leg to meet the left. And then walk back onto your mat. There. As you exhale, you'll roll all the way down. If you can, one vertebrae at a time onto the back. Relax, open your arms, relax, open the legs now. Shavasana. Roll the shoulders underneath the back and shake out the legs slightly. And let the fingers curl towards the heart. Just cover yourself with a blanket if need be anything to feel, feel comfortable, right? Like a corpse, the head might naturally want to roll to one side or the other, let it. Right, to become a corpse, we have to really become comfortable first. And that comfort comes through the focus on our breath, focus on the asana, and then eventually the letting go of everything, letting go of the control of breath now even. Let the breath flow absolutely naturally as it wants to. As you begin to teach your body the state of deep rest. But a rest not where you space out, but that you enter the deep sleep state of the body awakened in your mind. 
Just start to relax the joints from the toes, ankles, knee joints, hip joints, sacrum, lower back curve, back of the ribs, shoulder blades, neck curve, and back of the head. As you feel the contact of the back of the head against the ground, let all the facial muscles relax towards the back of the head. Let the brain also settle in this bed in the back of the head. From the head moving through the throat center, from the throat center, moving to the heart center and laying your mind to rest there. No matter what happened, I gave my best effort that I could in this moment. The rest is not up to me, swaha. Not mine. feeling all of the energies that swirl inside of you, becoming like the corpse, calming down. So that we can begin to understand that the seed of action comes from this quiet, Right, if you remember the story of the Shava, the corpse, how Shiva's own wife, Kali, getting drunk with her own power in a frenzy, almost destroying the whole world. So Shiva comes and he lays down like a corpse. And before she kills him by stepping on him, she remembers. She comes back to who she is. So there is that aspect inside of each and every human being where the energy can turn destructive, which was meant for positive use but because we were not aware, the energy becomes harmful and we lose control. In that moment, lay your mind down like a corpse. Just wait.
feeling the qualities of that eternal sun within yourself. And not just yourself, but all beings have this potential to give life, to nourish, to be harmonious. Start to breathe deeper now. Come back to the surface of the body slowly. Wake up, wake up, wake up the body. With breath first. Extending your breathing to the skin layer out into the extremities. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up into the awakened state, the buddhi wisdom within. Good. Start to move the fingers and toes. Right. And like Virabhadra, waking up with enthusiastic effort. Maybe you draw the legs together, extend the arms up overhead. A few breaths, elongating the body from the inner central sun, extending in all directions. Good. And then exhale all the breath out. You can roll right up to sit or roll to the side and then press up to sit as you wish. But let the energy carry you upright in a seated position. There's no need to delay, <laughs> right? No need to delay our meditation. And turning the chin slightly down, feeling the breath in the nostrils. Bring all your focus to the sensations of the breath at the upper lip, at the nostrils. Let's just see if you can feel the full length of your inhalation flowing, washing into your body. The full length of your exhalation flowing, washing out of your body. Each one of us living our own personal myth. Our own personal journey through time and space. Each day learning to respect that journey and respect the journey of others as well. Good. If you'd like to join in all, you can bring the hands to Anjali Mudra, head gazing down to heart center. Oh. 
सर्वे भवन्तु सुखी नहो सर्वे संतु निरामया सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कश्चित् दुःख भवे ओम शान्ति शान्ति May all beings be healthy, happy, prosperous. May all beings be free from their sufferings. Thank you.